Okay, guys. Okay, hi guys. So, uh, in this video, I will be looking and solving um, problem. I will be looking over and solving problem 50 from chapter 27. Um, and the picture is right over here. Um, so the question is, determine the electric field strength E1 in region 1, E3 in region 3, and E5 in region 5. That's the first part of the question. Give your answer as a multiple of Q over epsilon naught. Okay. So... Let's start by solving this problem with Gaussian sphere. So let's draw a Gaussian sphere like this. And that covers like the span of the two plates. It's a cylinder that covers the whole um, the construct. Okay, so the E field in region 1 is pointing upwards. The E field in region 5 is pointing downwards. That's the convention. E field goes from the most positive to the least positive, and in this case, it's to nowhere. Um, and so we have a we have a Gaussian a surface, and the flux here in this situation is E one a a being the area, this area here that it passes through. That can be that's just an arbitrary variable. Plus E five a, and this is equal to the net flux. And this is also equal to, by definition, the charge enclosed, Q enclosed, divided by epsilon naught. And what is Q enclosed in this case? It's just this Q plus this Q. So that's Q plus 2Q equals 3Q over epsilon naught. Okay, so that's done. Now we, for now we need to incorporate E3 into all of this. So we have the electric field in region 3 pointing upwards, right? Because it goes from most positive to least positive. So that's the direction of the electric field. And the, again, as we saw earlier, the direction of the electric field in region 1 is also upwards. So what would be the flux sort of equation or the flux value for a Gaussian surface that looks something like that? Um, it would be E1a minus E3a equals Q over epsilon naught, because Q is the charge and close, so Q. So why is it minus E3? If you notice that both these electric fields that are passing through the Gaussian surface are in the same direction, and therefore we can't add the two fluxes. We need to sub take the difference of the two fluxes, and that will be equal to Q over epsilon naught, in this case, the electric field. Um, so... Now we have we need just one more bit in this whole scheme to make it all work. And that is that E1 equals E5. And this is pretty clear because if you look at sort of the symmetry of this whole setup, if you look at the symmetry of this whole setup, um, you have the same amount of charge acting on region uh, 5 as you do on region 1. So E1 equals E5. So if we apply that to this formula here, we get 2E1A equals 3Q over 2 epsilon naught. And if we solve this for E1, we get 3 over 2Q over A epsilon naught. And this also equals E5. So that's two-thirds of this problem, this part done. Now we need to substitute this value into this equation over here. So once we substitute that into that, we get 3 over 2, Q over epsilon naught, the A's cancel, minus E3A equals Q over epsilon naught. This is E3. Sorry about that. Um, now, once we, if we solve for E3, we get 1 over 2 epsilon naught, Q epsilon naught, sorry, equals... E three A. So let's move it over here. Uh, e three therefore equals one over two Q over epsilon naught A. And that is your final answer. That's the electric field in region three. Now, if you if you look at this carefully, you can also draw a, a Gaussian surface around the plate, the bottom plate. And that would yield, yield you the same thing, except you would have E3, E3, A plus E5, A, 
equals 2q over 2q over epsilon naught. And so that would be the equation of that because if you have the E field is pointing downwards uh, in region 5 and it's pointing, as we saw, upwards in region 3. So therefore you would have a plus sign over there. Okay, so on to the next part of this problem, which is... So the next part of this problem is find the electric field in region 2 and region 4. And this is really quick. There's no work needed to be done over here. It's just that electric field within a, in a conducting plate. If you look at the problem, it refers to them as conducting materials. So an electric field in a conducting material is 0. So E2 equals E4 equals 0. So that's as simple as that. Okay, so in this part, we will be looking at the surface charge densities in A, B, C, D. Um, and first, let's take a look at surface A. So if we draw, in, the, uh, in this part, we will be using Gaussian uh, uh, cylinders as well, um, just to, to make it easier to solve. Um, so if we draw a Gaussian cylinder or a surface like that, that uh, it doesn't cross over to region 3, but it stops in region 2, um, we are left with the flux equation E2 A plus E1 A equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So remember, we don't know what Q enclosed is because Q enclosed has to do with how much charge is on this surface right here. And we don't know that. All we know is the total charge is Q, but we don't know that well, well, we don't know the charge that is on the surface over there. So we don't know what Q enclosed is. So we want to get this into some form, eta, charge density, equals something. So how do we do that? The first step in that is getting rid of this because E2 is 0. We know that from the previous part. So we have E1 eta, we can rewrite it as this, E1 times epsilon naught equals Q enclosed over A. And that is equal to eta A. Because that's Q over A is the definition of surface charge density. So if we put E1 over here uh, in terms of uh, A, Q, and epsilon naught, uh, like we did er er earlier, uh, earlier in the video, we get 3 over 2 Q over A epsilon naught times epsilon naught equals eta A. And there we go, there's our answer. 3 over 2 Q over A is the surface charge density eta A. Eta B is very similar. Um, draw a Gaussian surface like this, as you would imagine. And for that, we have uh, E2A plus E3A, in this case, equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Um, and E2A goes away because we know E2 is 0. And E3A, as we saw in the previous part, was 1 over 2 Q over A epsilon naught. And this times epsilon naught equals Q enclosed over a, which in turn is equal to eta b. So basically, I'm just rewriting this formula, so it's all so it, it is in the form eta b or q over q enclosed over a equals something. And so this a is epsilon naught cancels, and we get eta b equals one over two q over a. Now this is not the final answer. It's actually not the final answer. The final answer has to do with the sign that this takes. So, uh, ultimately, we, we need eta, eta A plus eta B to be equal to Q over A. Because Q is the total charge that uh, the, the top plate contains. So, therefore, for that to be fulfilled, uh, this eta B has to have a negative sign. It needs to be minus 1 over 2 Q over A. Because 3 over 2 plus minus 1 over 2 equals just 1, which is, or 1 Q over A. So that would give us a correct uh, and proper answer of eta B. It's not this, but it, it is in fact equal to minus 1 over 2 Q over A. <coughs> okay, so we will do uh, surface charge density C and surface charge density in D in, the very, in a very similar way. 
So we draw a Gaussian surface uh, that doesn't go all the way to region 5, but stops at region 4. And we get the uh, flux equation E3A plus E4A equals some Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And E4A goes away, E4 is 0 as we saw, and E3 times epsilon naught equals Q enclosed over A, which in turn is equal to eta C. So I'm not going to do the whole thing out, but if, if, we, if we substitute uh, the value we got for E3 in, uh, in the previous parts, uh, we will get uh, eta c is equal to 1 over 2 q over a. And for eta uh, d, it's the same process. We draw a Gaussian surface, and the flux equation for that Gaussian surface is e4a plus e5a equals q enclosed over epsilon naught. Uh, e4a goes away, e4 is 0. Um, and if we get into the form eta d, eta d equals q enclosed over a, which equals e5 epsilon naught, which simplifies out to 3 over 2 q over a. And if we look at it, if we look at both eta c and eta d, right, um, we don't need to do any sign work with this because the two add up to uh, 2 q over a, because 3 over 2 q over a plus 1 over 2 q over a is 2 q over a. And 2 q over a would be the total surface charge, that, that total sum of the, the sum of the surface charges, because that's how much the bottom plate contains. So um, that is it for uh, this problem, and I hope that was all clear. Thank you.